Everyone enjoys a good animated movie or show, and Walt Disney hardly ever misses, with this decade seeing a rise in diverse storytelling from all kinds of cultures around the globe, it's no wonder that the kind of lessons we're learning from these movies are expanding as well. Movies have always had the kind of impact that could change the world, and Disney's going all in. And we have to talk about Strange World. First off, what to expect? Disney's most well-known for some pretty magical landscapes, literally and figurative with stories like Big Hero 6, Raya and the Last Dragon, and Encanto, it's hard not to want more as the standards of good plots become higher. Besides, animated movies have a much larger scope of capturing fantasy landscapes, creatures, and superpowers than live-action movies. This isn't to discredit CGI, but it just looks and feels better to see those kinds of things in a realm where we already expect it to be done well. So, what are we working with when it comes to Strange World? You'll be be surprised to find that there's more to the story than amazing visuals and family. The characterizations have been getting a lot of praise, especially when it comes to one specific character, but we wouldn't want to spoil the fun this early on, so stay tuned to find out more. The movie directed by Don Hall and Ki Wen tells a tale of a family of explorers, the Clades. Voiced by Jake Gyllenhaal, the main character is a father, Searcher, who used to be an explorer alongside his own father. From what's told in the trailer, Searcher's dad disappears appeared during one of his expeditions and never returned, Searcher's 16-year-old son, Ethan, wants to be an explorer like his grandfather, but doesn't have the courage to open up about it because he fears upsetting his dad. Everything changes when the plant-based power source, Searcher Invented, stops working, and the story takes us from there into an adventure that simply can't be forgotten. Next up, praise for the diversity. Diversity isn't just about people from different parts of the world, but people's personalities in general. We see assertive and protective women, gentle and empathetic men, and young people that are fearless in reaching out for what they want. Let's take Searcher, who's a pretty proud family dad and doesn't care for hyper-masculine gender roles. He's gentle, uplifting, and supportive of his son's feelings. Then there's his own father, who, although pretty aggressive and energetic, is still pretty happy-go-lucky and absolutely hilarious. Meridian, voiced by Gabrielle Union, is the matriarch of the Clade household and a very accomplished pilot, headstrong and not easily swayed by danger. That's not to say that she isn't as gentle and loving as Searcher, and goes to show that two things can coexist. Disney doesn't shy away from strong women, especially since introducing the buff and powerful Luisa from Encanto. Talking about strong women, we also have Calisto Mal, voiced by Lucy Liu, who is the president of their country, Avalonia. There are more characters along the way that constantly challenge the masculine versus feminine archetypes that we so often see in other movies, but Strange World is here to set the record straight. Whoever you are, you're needed on the team. And then we have Ethan, voiced by Jabuki Young White, Disney's very first, out in the open, lead LGBTQ plus character. He's kind of the reason why the movie's been making rounds on the Disney discussion boards, and this is a huge step from the representation we got in the previous Disney movies. We're just glad this movie's finally making sure that LGBTQ plus representation is done right. Coming up, the road to opening the closet, finally. How many times have you seen an absolutely flamboyant, evil villain in a Disney movie and thought, why are they like that? Well, there's a reason. For a really long time, villains or characters meant to be disliked were deliberately queer-coded so that the intolerance could extend into real life as well. Think of villains like Isma from The Emperor's New Groove or Jafar from Aladdin, even Maleficent from the animated movie of Sleep Sleeping Beauty is queer-coded. It's mainly done through the outfits and their personalities, exaggerated to the point where they become almost unbearable. While Disney tries turning the tide since it hasn't been well-received until now, the tactic changed from queer-coding villains to straight-up queer-baiting audiences instead. And there's no better example of this than Elsa from Frozen. We're not entirely sure what it was about the first movie that made so many people feel like Elsa wasn't straight, but there was no denying it, except for when people shipped her with Jack Frost, which was sorta cute. When Big Hero 6 introduced Gogo Tamago and Honey Lemon, people were once again convinced that the two girls were queer as well and possibly involved with each other. If that's not enough, even Raya and Namari from Raya and the Last Dragon low-key had some pretty fire chemistry. The analyses don't lie, there's a way these characters act that gives them away instantaneously to queer watchers, but it always leaves us all empty-handed. It's no longer enough for Disney 
Disney producers, directors, and executives to simply imply in their interviews that these characters are queer. What's more, what Disney is doing for the queer folk. Alright, so it's not like Disney hasn't had outright gay characters before, but this is the first time one of them is a lead character in a movie. Honestly, why did it even take that long? So many kids know something's different about them from as young as they can talk. Shouldn't there be some kind of moral responsibility on companies like Disney to tackle all sorts of childhood struggles? Strange World does so much more than give young kids the representation to feel seen. It also gives parents the tools to navigate a more diverse way of communicating with their queer kids. There's one scene where Ethan's grandfather asks if he has a sweetheart, where Ethan's blush gives him away, his grandfather excitedly follows up with, who is it? That's it. That's all we needed to see for this intense wave of relief to wash over us. Here's an adult who didn't assume off the bat that his grandkids straight, left room for possibilities, and even embraced it like it was no big deal. How often do you see that kind of approach? So many movies with openly queer representation show us the stress of being queer and coming out, and this movie's an absolute breath of fresh air when it comes to this issue. Here's to hoping that the world's one step closer to more conversations like this. Up next, Jabuki Young White on playing the first openly gay character. The openly queer stand-up comedian had much to say about the experience of working on a meaningful character like Ethan. There's so much more to Ethan than his queerness, but the movie also made sure that it wasn't a disposable trait. Quote, you can forget sometimes how needed stuff like this is for people, he said, and he's absolutely right. The fight for inclusivity isn't completely over. There are still so many places in the world where queer kids are in the dark about who they are, and still so many families that don't understand how to process having queer children. Young White talks about how fun the process was for him, noting that there were plenty of characteristics in Ethan that personally resonated with him and praised the animators for the amount of care put into creating such a character. Quote, this is going to be important to a lot of people, he said. He wasn't expecting the overwhelmingly positive reaction from those that watched the movie, which was released recently this November. Young White constantly mentioned that he he feels incredibly lucky to have worked on Strange World, and we're sure a lot of people feel just as much to have a guy like Ethan to connect with in animation. Finally, the role of LGBTQ plus community in this historic movie. Authentic queer representation in movies is hard to come by, and whatever is done at all is so far mainly by independent queer filmmakers and writers or very small teams. If you look at the interview for the She-Ra animated reboot and Disney's Owl House, it won't surprise you just how much of a fight was needed to get their queer main leads on screen. In fact, Owl House's Luz Nocida is Disney's first ever openly queer character in a long-running animation. We're not including Pixar's Out, although it was the first Disney feature to have a gay lead because the short film was hardly a full 10 minutes long. Another thing Disney got right was making sure that queer people were involved in the making of the movie from the very beginning. That's not what we see every day, but it's a standard we hope all production houses will set going forward. In addition to Young White's active participation, an LGBTQ plus organization was also involved in the making. Disney themselves reached out to GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, and worked alongside them to make sure Ethan was curated properly. Young White mentioned the amount of support and feedback that non-queer teammates were open to throughout the entire process, and it was this willingness to listen that made Ethan Ethan Clade possible in all the best ways. And that's a wrap. Are you looking forward to watching Strange World? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.